Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Newpedia. Today we're going to talk about pulmonary hemorrhage uh, uh, as a bedside management uh, and hopefully this will be in less than 10 minutes. So what uh, is the pulmonary hemorrhage? Uh, so it's actually acute onset of bleeding uh, from oropharynx or the endotracheal tube uh, that's associated with cardiorespiratory deterioration and changes on chest x-ray. How it happens, we think it's more likely happening due to uh, a hemorrhagic pulmonary edema. And what are the risk factors for developing uh, pulmonary hemorrhage? The first risk factors is mainly the prematurity and also uh, RDS. The persistent, uh, uh, or sorry, the PDA. Uh, uh, and the hypervolemia also can uh, contribute to developing pulmonary hemorrhage, uh, especially in the first 24 hours. Coagulopathy also uh, can cause the pulmonary hemorrhage, as well as sepsis and intrauterine growth retardation and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, uh, grade 3. So, how... Uh, pulmonary hemorrhage presence. Usually uh, the most common scenario is that the nurse looking after the baby is going to call you, please can you come and see this child. Uh, we're worried about increased oxygen requirement and we think there is a, a pink or red frothy secretion in the ET tube if this baby is ventilated. So, uh, if you auscultate also the chest, you might uh, uh, listen to widespread crepitations, and you might notice also look into the monitor uh, tachycardia, and you might also be able to uh, uh, detect some signs of heart failure. So, uh, the uh, investigation. So the first investigation you're going to do is the uh, uh, basically a blood gas, uh, ideally arterial blood gas, so you can check the oxygenation and the CO2. And you're going to do a chest x-ray, which we can see in the slide showing uh, a classic white out with only air bronchogram visible, but maybe less striking uh, and resembles RDS. The other thing is the full blood count uh, to check if this child is anemic, you might need to correct that by blood transfusion and also clotting. You might need to fix uh, with uh, uh, blood products. Uh, the other thing also, you need to think of sepsis as we um, talked earlier, that uh, uh, sepsis can cause pulmonary hemorrhage. So you need to do a blood culture in case if you're starting antibiotics in this condition. If you have a trained person in the unit, or you are trained yourself, you can do an echo. So you can check uh, if there is a, a PDA, uh, a significant PDA basically which is causing this pulmonary hemorrhage and at the same time also you can do a cranial ultrasound to check if there is uh, any associated IVH or interventricular hemorrhage. The question is, the first thing you need to do uh, in, uh, in case if you face this uh, 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 scenario uh, is to inform your consultant. That's really important because sometimes can uh, uh, the, the child can deteriorate rapidly. Uh, so that's why you give a chance to your consultant, especially if you're working out of hours and the consultant is not on site, please inform him. The uh, management is not much different really from any other management of acute uh, uh, critical si uh, situation. So you need to think about the airway and breathing. So in this condition, for example, most of the babies will be intubated, ventilated, and then develop pulmonary hemorrhage. So what you're going to do in this condition, please sedate this child. That's really important. Okay, Minimal handling and no suction. That's really important, this, these three steps. The other thing you can do from the ventilation point of view, you can increase your uh, peep uh, from uh, maybe five or six, whatever the baby is on, to eight centimeter or 10 centimeter. Uh, that will help as a kind of uh, uh, tamponade to stop the bleeding. Uh, and uh, the increasing also the inspiratory time can help and can give a similar effect. Uh, and please, in this condition, don't remove the ET tube. 
uh, because the pulmonary hemorrhage can be that severe that you won't be able to put another uh, endotracheal tube. So please be very careful with that. Uh, think of surfactant. That's uh, another point. Although the surfactant itself, we think, can be associated with increased risk of pulmonary hemorrhage, but uh, in case if it happens, we might think of surfactant as a way to to help and to treat basically the pulmonary hemorrhage. You need to correct any metabolic acidosis, so you can use bicarbonate in this condition. And coming to the uh, uh, cardiovascular part you need to be very careful with your fluid management and please remember that your pathology here is most likely to be uh, a hemorrhagic pulmonary edema so you don't want to uh, give more fluids in this condition and this will uh, exacerbate your edema so if this child is hypovolemic then maybe you think of a bolus giving him and ideally to be honest it should be the uh, a kind of a blood product uh, more than uh, saline that's uh, and you might need to think also of enotropic support in this condition uh, and if the child is not hypovolemic so maybe you're thinking the other way around um, whether we can treat uh, we can give a furosemide in this condition so this will uh, kind of reduce the reduce the fluid overload and uh, might help with the management of the pulmonary hemorrhage as an acute situation and if there is a pda you need to think also of restricting the fluids to 60 mls per kilogram per day that's really important uh, in case if you have any indication uh, of correcting the coagulopathy, you might need to think of vitamin K, you might need to think of uh, fresh frozen plasma, and also blood transfusion in case if the child is too anemic um, because the child is ventilated. So you need to uh, adjust your hemoglobin to make sure that you're giving effective, uh, effective mechanical ventilation. If you're suspecting infection in this condition, as we said previously in the investigation, you've done the blood culture, there is no harm starting until antibiotics and then you can review it in 48 hours in view of the culture and the, the clinical condition of the child. Thank you very much. Please if you have any comments uh, feel free to put it in the uh, comment section and I will uh, see you in the next episode. Thank you very much.